and welcome back. I'm Amanda Erickson. I'm here with the Director of Athletics, Kirby Hoka. Welcome. Thank you, Amanda. It's great to be here. And we have our first question for you from Mr. Miami H. Kirby, Miami is getting a TV deal like Texas, where fans will have a Canes-only TV station. Well, obviously what Texas uh, just signed was unheard of in, in our profession. Um, I think a lot of people are, are watching the landscape of uh, intercollegiate athletics. The Atlantic Coast Conference just uh, accepted a new 12-year television agreement with ESPN that begins in June of this year. It's a new 12-year agreement, so we're limited somewhat into what we could sign on our own. However, we're continuing to look at taking product that we control as a department and looking at the different channels and methods to get them out, just like today. We control this product. We're delivering it through Hurricane Sports dot com through all the social media so we're going to continue to to work with our partners ESPN ABC Raycom Sports CSS on how we can deliver the content that we control so while the future for us may not look what Texas's future looks like right now and keep in mind um, they had more flexibility over the summer with the conference realignment and what was going on with the Big 12 Conference to uh, make the arrangements that they did. We're going to continue to be proactive, aggressive, and maximize the content that we control as far as how we distribute to our fan base. Our next comment is from the Sergeant Major. Kirby, you hit a home run with Al Golden. Do you have any worries at all when you hired him? No, I didn't. Um, I saw very quickly with Coach Golden, the organization, the attention to detail. I saw his passion, his hunger, his drive. Uh, I saw that he was a winner. I knew what he had done at Temple where he had taken that football program from the very bottom, uh, built them to a respectable mid-major program, and I knew with the tools, the resources, the athletic talent that uh, he would have access to here at the U that uh, our fan base would be excited uh, once they had a chance to meet him and get to know him, and, and that's indeed what has happened. I tell you, I couldn't be more proud or pleased with the uh, success that he's made in a very short <coughs> time. And looking forward to spring football, and then uh, the fall will be here before we know it, but it'll be exciting and great things are ahead for our football program. Our next comment is from Carolina Kane. How tough will it be for you to watch the Canes play K-State? Oh, uh, it, it won't be tough. It's going to be fun. Um, you know, if there's one game that uh, uh, that you know, we want to win all of them. If there's one game, I want to win a little bit more than uh, the, the others next year. It's it's hard to say. You want to be, you know, you want to beat Florida State. You want to beat Virginia Tech. You want to beat uh, all the teams. Ohio State. You know, we owe something from from this year back. But uh, Kansas State will be special for me, and uh, that's the one game ball that I want to make sure I get next year to uh, to put in my office. Our next comments from Miami, Chris Kirby. Who were some of your mentors in the business? Well, I've been been fortunate that I've been around some very good people in this industry that have provided me numerous opportunities. And uh, you know, Joe Castiglione is probably my my closest mentor and and uh, someone that I've always looked up to in this profession. Uh, Joe is the athletics director at the University of Oklahoma. I spent seven years with him. And he took me under his wing, uh, gave me opportunities to grow professionally, to develop, and you know, I still seek his counsel. Um, on a on a consistent basis, and uh, so Joe's uh, Joe's a close friend and somebody that uh, you know I consider as a mentor in this in this profession. We have a comment from Jay Orr. Could you help set up a Labor Day football series with USC in the future? Now that is set up to play FSU has fallen on the wait side. Well, you know that's a that's a intriguing idea, and uh, you know something that I think we. We would look uh, maybe to in the, the future. You know, we get I get a lot of uh, comments about possible football matchups against West Coast teams, and you, you want to be careful because of the time change uh, when it comes to those uh, those games. But playing on Labor Day night, maybe we could go out a couple of days early to start the acclimation process. Um, you know, as part of the ACC's television agreement. Uh, the ACC will control that Monday night Labor Day game for the next 12 years. So uh, 
good idea and maybe something for us to, to think through and uh, open that door and discuss. We have a comment from David. Um, does the seventh game on the football schedule mean my season tickets will go up? <laughs> um, you know, it depends on your seating location, David. Um, not all season tickets are going to see a price increase. Um, some will, and it will be a minimal price increase in those sections that do uh, have an increase to the season ticket price. And if you break it down game by game, uh, every season ticket in the stadium this year will be less than what it was per game last year. So although uh, the bottom figure may be more, on a game-by-game -game basis, it will be less, but it's dependent upon what uh, section in the stadium you seat in, sit in. Comment from one Love Canes. What other improvements beyond the short center is Miami planning? Well, we, um, you know, we're looking at uh, the future right now, and you know, the short center for excellence, athletic excellence, is our top priority. We're excited that uh, we're on schedule uh, to begin construction for that in December of this calendar year. So we're very excited about that. And again, that's going to be a new uh, gallery of champions, a new uh, lobby exhibit space to showcase our trophies, our uh, great history in our football program. It's going to have a new football team locker room, a football team uh, lounge space, and it's going to have a new athletic training facility, which is probably our most immediate need that we have. That's going to serve all 400 of our student athletes and it's going to have a new academic support facility that will serve all 400 student athletes. So we're excited about that project. Uh, other things that we're talking about, we're talking, uh, we're looking at the Bank United Center. Uh, we would like to find a way to uh, bring a new scoreboard uh, video system into the Bank United Center that's very needed. We are looking at Alex Rodriguez Park at Mark Light Field um, at our batting cages. Uh, they are in need of, of an upgrade. We're looking at the coach's offices, the Ron Frazier building at Alex Rodriguez Park as far as some possible upgrades. Uh, we're looking at Cobb Stadium. Uh, we do have a need for more seats at Cobb Stadium. That is where our track and our soccer teams compete. Uh, we're looking at options there that would be additional seating. It would have a press box for soccer. It would have a press box on the finish line for track and field and it would also include a new uh, plaza entryway into Cobb Stadium, uh, concessions, restrooms, uh, which are all needed. Um, so that's something that's on the horizon. And, and we're also further down the road looking at the Schiff Family Tennis Center and some uh, exciting uh, possible renovations, expansions to the Schiff Family Tennis Center. So uh, a lot of things are um, in the works, but the Schwartz Center for Athletic Excellence is our focus at this time. We have a comment from U305 Swagger. Kirby, the fans are dying to know, how much creative input does the school have for each sport's uniforms? For example, will Nike allow us to choose our next football uniform style? U305 Swagger, I like your name. Um, good question. Um, you know, we do have input. We, we ultimately have uh, approval on every uniform design that you see us wear. Uh, Nike has a creative department that comes up with ideas, concepts, uh, and they'll come here periodically and, and share with us, their art team will, on the direction that they're going. They'll take uh, the comments that our equipment team has, that I have, that our marketing and branding team has, that the head coach for that sport has. At times, we'll even bring in student athletes from that sport and ask them uh, about their ideas. So ultimately, we do have the control. Uh, I've received a lot of questions and comments about football uniforms uh, for this next season. We will not have new, a new design for our football uniform this year, but the following year we will. So for the uh, football season in 2012, we will have a new uh, football uniform design at that time. So in 12, in 2011, we will have the same design that we wore this year. And I have heard uh, the comments loud and clear from our fan base on a, a traditional uh, mindset there, wanting to, to uh, you know, maybe go back to the, the 80s, the early 90s, and, and have more of the traditional look than the, than the uh, progressive look. So uh, we'll, we'll keep those comments in mind. We have a comment from Dennis. Kirby, any talk of another home-and-home home with UF after the 2013 game? 
Dennis, great question. We would love to play UF. Um, we'd love to, to play them on a consistent basis. I've always thought that you know, the concept of being able to allow every one of our student athletes and every one of their student athletes in the sport of football to be able to play uh, each other here in Miami and play a game in Gainesville would be a good approach. So every young man that came in here to play football knew they were going to play the Florida Gators once at home and once on the road. Uh, unfortunately, um, they are not interested. Um, Jeremy Foley, their athletic director, and I have talked on a number of occasions, and and uh, it's unfortunate that at this time they have no interest in in playing us in the sport of football uh, for the foreseeable future. So, you know, I'm I'm hopeful that that would change. I don't know what what would happen to make that change, but you know, uh, every opportunity I get, I, I try to send the message that we. Uh, would love to continue that that game. I think not only is it great for both uh, universities, well, I, I know it's great for our university, that's the only one I can speak to, but I do know it's great for college football. And uh, I'm hopeful that that uh, their approach, something will cause to happen to make that change in the future. We have a comment from James in Boise. Kirby, if Boise State gets close to 58, to the 58 game home winning streak, will you schedule a game up there to protect our streak? It's a good question, and uh, I know a lot of our fans uh, have asked similar questions. And I think as as Coach Golden and I look at our our football schedule, it's important that we schedule games that are strategic and that make sense for us. Make sense for us in terms of uh, our fan base. Uh, where we have alumni, where our fans are to take our program there, where we have opportunities in major media markets to expand and, and grow our brand and our fan base, and at the same time, uh, where our recruiting priorities and our recruiting focus is uh, throughout the country. And I, I'm not sure Boise, Idaho uh, fits those criteria from a strategic standpoint for us uh, in the best interest of our program here today. So. You, know, you never say never to a concept or idea, but right now that that just doesn't, uh, you know, that's not on our radar screen. Comment from Sebastian is my homeboy. Have we figured out a compromise for the parking lot situation that we seem to struggle with last year? Yeah, Sebastian is my homeboy. We, we, uh, we have, and uh, we have presented that with our season ticket information that uh, is in the process of being sent out. Some people may have already seen that, but we will have a, uh, a number, two or three lots this year dedicated to pregame tailgate space that individuals will be able to come in, park where they would like within uh, segmented parking areas at Sun Life Stadium and, and be able to put their tailgates out and tailgate with, with friends that they might want to meet up within these uh, segregated areas. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's a solution and we have had a chance to vet it with a number of our constituents and, and fans and donors and uh, the overall I would say 99.9% uh, .9 of the reaction that we've received has been a positive one. We have a comment from a UM alum in Philly. I love all this media access that is now available to us. Is this all part of Al's master plan and why wasn't it done before? It's awesome. Well, thank you for recognizing it and, and your comment. And you know, I'd like to to compliment our communication staff. Uh, I think that you know the the sports information staff, media relations, communications department, uh, all under the leadership of Chris Freed, is is brought us to a new level. And I think uh, all of you out there watching right now through the social media day uh, are seeing um, the results and the new direction to to be able to do something here at the U that has never been done before in intercollegiate athletics with uh, you know 12 straight hours of access leading up to our opening night of baseball is, uh, is incredible. And it's a testament to the creativeness, to uh, being proactive and, and aggressive. And I think with Coach Golden coming in, you know, he's a very skilled communicator and, and salesperson. And you know, part of what he thinks about every day is selling this you, this brand, this football program to young men and recruits across this entire country. So uh, it is a new approach for us. I think, uh, you know, I compliment our communications team for their hard work, their initiative, their efforts, and at the same time, you know, appreciate uh, and, and, and have great admiration for the way that Coach Golden looks at 
marketing and promotions and communications around our football program because in so many ways uh, this football program is the face of this great university and there's no greater marketing tool that we have than this football program and I think being able to open up the communication lines being able to open up the uh, the marketing the the uh, internal access that you mentioned is, is just tremendous and, uh, and as we go forward uh, you know we're going to take control of our own brand I think that's what we're doing today we're controlling our brand we're controlling our message and we're delivering it uh, directly to you our fans and um, that's something that we believe is the right thing to do and something that we're going to continue to be proactive and aggressive in doing as we move forward. We have another question from Sebastian is my homeboy. Any chance for a game at the new Marlins Stadium for the baseball team? Well, you know, it's, it's nothing that's been talked about. Um, we're just, uh, we're looking forward to uh, being able to, uh, starting next year, uh, not share Sun Life Stadium with, with the Marlins. Uh, once they get their new stadium, which I know will be great for them, uh, it will sure alleviate some challenges that we've had with uh, the football schedule, especially at the beginning of the, the football season when we're trying to, to uh, rotate or share the stadium with the Marlins. Um, so uh, no discussions as of now of, of playing a, a game uh, at the new Marlins Stadium. You know, Sun Life Stadium is our home, and, and that's where uh, we will have a minimum of six games a year, and hopefully on some years, seven home games like we are this year. A comment from Wayne the Cane. Is the U everything you thought it would be when you joined? The, the U is everything uh, I thought it would be plus. You know, <laughs> what a what a great, uh, great program, a great brand to have an opportunity to lead and to be associated with. and. You know, the, the level of excellence that was set by those who have come before us, uh, that we aspire to emulate, that we aspire to reach their level of excellence, that championship level, uh, each and every day is something that uh, that's motivating, something that's exciting to me and I know the staff that I work with uh, to, to get back to the elite level in intercollegiate athletics. And I, I couldn't be more excited about uh, where we are today and the progress that we've made you know, our, our young people, our student athletes continue to excel and do great things. This past fall semester, we had 183 student athletes that achieved a 3.0 grade point average or better in the classroom. 183 out of 400 student athletes. So that, that's a tremendous testament to the caliber of young people uh, that we're bringing into this university. 14 of our 18 teams. Uh, achieved a 3.0 grade point average or higher. 14 of our 18 teams had a 3.0 grade point average or higher. That's just, that's tremendous. That's a great celebration point of pride for us. And, and when you look competitively, you know, our women's sport programs are having tremendous success with women's basketball. And, and how fun was it to see the three young women that were here before me, uh, just dynamic young people. And the success that they're having has been so much fun to watch ranked 13th in the country in women's basketball. Our women's tennis team is ranked ninth in the country, um, playing really with four true freshmen this year. So uh, that's been fun. Uh, our head uh, track coach, director of track and field for both our men and women here at the U, just yesterday was announced the head coach for the 2012 Olympic team, which is arguably the greatest honor uh, that could be bestowed upon somebody in their profession. But what a testament to the leadership that we have. Uh, Brittany Viola, uh, our women's diver here at the U, uh, is competing at the ACC championship today, but she won the USA Winter National Championship in the 10-meter platform last week. So just uh, tremendous things going on. The U's been everything that I had ever dreamed it would, plus some. And, you know, it's an honor and privilege to be associated with this great athletic program. We have a question from AB. Any word on where the spring game will be? Um, the spring game is going to be at Lockhart Stadium in, uh, in, in Broward. Uh, we're going to have uh, Coach Golden has agreed to open up all of his spring scrimmages. We're going to have three scrimmages. Uh, there's going to be one here in Dade County, of course. There'll be one in Palm Beach County. And then the spring football game is going to be on April 16th at Lockhart Stadium in Broward. Broward. Comment from Mr. Hecht, what is the truth behind not having an on-campus stadium? Money, capacity, or the city of Coral Gables? 
Well, Mr. Hecht, um, good, good question. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a topic that uh, comes up frequently about uh, the desire of our fan base to have a, a stadium on campus. And, and honestly, I, I, I'm not sure where it would go. You know, um, I, my tenure here at Miami started after the decision had been made to move to Sun Life Stadium. And Sun Life Stadium uh, provides a great home for the Hurricanes. Um, the Dolphins organization from top to bottom have been great to work with. Uh, on game days, um, you know, they've dedicated a complete locker room to the Canes uh, that we can show off 12 months a year. We can bring recruits to our locker room there. When you look at the sports medicine area that we have there, the equipment room we have there, it's first class. And I think as young men across this country, play the sport of football, they aspire to play at the next level. They want to play in the NFL. And uh, what a great opportunity to be able to, to bring young men here and, and take them to Sun Life Stadium, show them our own locker room, show them our own training room there, and to be able to say, you're going to play in an NFL stadium every year. So, you know, that's our home. Um, I, I wish we had more land for a lot of reasons uh, here in Coral Gables, but unfortunately we don't. And, and right now, you know, our, our home is Sun Life Stadium, and we're very proud to call that our home. We have a comment from One Love Canes. What do you think the job Frank Haith? What do you think of the job Frank Haith has done this year? You know, I, I'm, I'm I'm proud of Frank, and I'm proud of uh, this basketball program and this team. Um, you know, we went through a very difficult stretch this season and, and we lost a, a number of, of very close games but I think the mark of a a true champion I think the mark of character is when you face adversity how do you respond and it would have been so easy uh, for these young men and, and this coaching staff to get down start second guessing themselves and uh, give up but that's not what they did they did just the opposite they kept fighting they believed in what they were doing. They believed in one another. And, and things have started to change for us. We have a big go home game on Sunday against Clemson. I hope all of the, the fans watching will come out and be there to, to cheer this team on. We need you there. Um, but, but I'm proud. Frank Haith is a competitor. Frank Haith is a fighter. And uh, this team believes in Frank. You know, you, you've seen it today on social media day. You've seen Malcolm Grant. You've seen Julian Gamble here. You've seen what type of young men we have within this program and, and and the environment the chemistry within that program is very very good and while the ball has not bounced our way at certain times this year uh, there are good things going on within that basketball program and there are better days ahead for us and keep in mind there's a lot of basketball to be played this year you know there's only two games that separate really the, 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 the middle pack of the ACC standings where we are right now so there's a lot to play for and then come Greensboro at the ACC tournament. We saw last year, we, we bring it all together at that time. We get on a hot streak, and uh, you know, our goal will be there to go to Greensboro to win that tournament and go to the big dance. And, and we have the athletic talent, the ability to do that. So, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm proud of Frank Haith. I'm proud of this basketball team for the, um, the character, uh, the commitment to winning of excellence that they've shown through, throughout this basketball season. We have a comment from you, Baseball Baby. Who is your favorite Kane football great of all time? My favorite football great of all time? Now, that's a loaded question. I, I, I'm not sure I can, I can give you an answer there because, uh, you know, I, I can hear if I say anybody other than Cortez Kennedy, he's going to start blowing up my, my cell phone, as will Russell Maryland and, and, and others. But... You know, you have so many greats that have played uh, here at the U and uh, have set the bar so high. And, you know, to be associated with, with those that have walked these halls is truly something special. So, you know, I, I just I echo what Coach Golden has said. All of our former student athletes out there, not just football, but every sport that we have, we need you here in Coral Gables. We need you to be visible. We need your support to walk these halls, to, to be around and encourage our student athletes today. And, uh, you know, there's, there's no question that, uh, you know, we have what I would say an X factor with the number of players that we have uh, from the NFL uh, that still walk these halls. Jonathan, Jonathan Vilma uh, was here 
uh, just the other day. And, um, you know, so there, there, there are so many greats, I can't select just one, but uh, we appreciate, appreciate all of them and their continued support and involvement in this program. Comment from Cuban Kane. Are they done with the baseball stadium renovations? You know, um, we, we have finished the project that uh, with, with the renovations to Alex Rodriguez Park, Mark Light Field that we started last year. Uh, we're going to continue to look at the batting cages. As I mentioned earlier, we're in need of uh, some improvements to our batting cage area. You know, we want to look at the Ron Frazier building, which is where uh, our coaches' offices, our support offices are there. We, we want to continue to look and, and modernize those and update those. Uh, at the same time, uh, when you come out to the ballpark, hopefully tonight, but if not tonight, when you come out this year, you'll, you'll, you may notice that we have an entirely new playing surface at Mark Light Field. Uh, so we have resodded the entire baseball field. We did that this summer. Uh, typically, your surface, uh, natural grass surface, uh, they say will last a, an average of eight to 10 years. Our surface had been down 12 years. So we went down about five inches. We leveled the field and came back with entirely new sod this year. So we will, again, have the nicest playing surface in all of uh, college baseball. Um, you know, the one thing I think our fans might notice when they come out uh, last year behind home plate, uh, we had some AstroTurf. I believe it said Canes. Well, we elected to put in all natural grass. So this year we don't have AstroTurf behind home plate. It's all grass. Uh, that might be a noticeable difference. But you know, we put a new scoreboard in two years ago. Uh, we've uh, added seats. We added a press box that includes uh, luxury suites. Um, we got the new surface down. So uh, we feel very proud of uh, our baseball facilities here at the University of Miami. And when you come see our clubhouse uh, that we have, our, our clubhouse will rival that of any Major League Baseball team uh, that our kids, uh, student athletes, have access to each and every day. So we're very proud of our baseball park. But with everything, we're not going to stop there. We're going to continue to look at ways to improve and, and maintain and provide that competitive edge that's so important. We have an interesting comment from T Dog. Kirby, what's up, homie? Can we get you to DJ some modern music this year to get our kids crunked and rock the stadium? Thanks. <laughs> T Dog's talking to the wrong the wrong guy. I, you know that maybe uh, look like what Morgan could could do a little singing and dancing in the session before me. So uh, maybe uh, maybe 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 that's a better a question suited for. Uh, uh, the individual is going to follow me. Maybe Coach Golden has some uh, suggestions that he can give to the uh, the DJ for uh, for football season this year. We have a comment from Harrison. Will you be interested to speak at the leadership forum for Dr. Susan Mullane's graduate class, Student Sports Administration? I would love to. Absolutely. Um, yeah, just let me know time and date, and if I am uh, in town, I would welcome the opportunity. Comment from JK Miami. What has the success of the women's basketball team done to help publicity for an often overlooked sport? Well, I think uh, their success has been tremendous. It's been a lot of fun to follow and watch. And, you know, I truly believe that uh, success breeds success. And when you look at the excitement and the coverage that our women's basketball team. Uh, has received. I, I truly believe that motivates other programs and other student athletes and, and to, to replicate that success. And when you look at what's going on right now with women's basketball, with uh, women's tennis, with women swimming and diving, uh, you know, our baseball program is one of the best in the country year in and year out. And, and when you see that success, and I don't want to leave out our, our track and field programs, we've got some of the most elite track and field athletes in this entire country that are competing now. Uh, the indoor championship season's approaching, then we'll go into the outdoor season. But when you, you, you start having success at the highest levels that we're experiencing now, uh, you know, our, our, our goal and our focus is that continues into uh, next fall with football, with soccer, with volleyball. You know, volleyball has had tremendous success. We've been to the NCAA tournament two years in a row, so we're very proud of those young women. But it's, it's been a lot of fun to watch basketball. The crowds have grown. Uh, we've had some of the best crowds in the history of women's basketball at the University of Miami with this recent success that we've had. So 
you know, I think it's a reflection upon Katie Meyer and, and you know, the leader of that program. You won't find a, a, a better leader, role model, or mentor, or educator for young women than Katie Meyer. And her, um, you know, her consistency and her drive to be success is very respectable. And, and the success they're having is not by chance. It's been very deserving. Um, you know, as, as you followed women's basketball here at the U, you know, the last few years have been challenging. They haven't been easy. But Katie never once has lost faith, has lost commitment, and, and her drive. And, and these young women um, see that level of confidence from her and uh, continue to replicate that. So uh, it, it's been fun to watch, and uh, it's contagious. And if you haven't seen them, come out on Monday night and watch these young women because they, they deserve your support. And I promise you will be entertained and uh, you'll have a lot of fun. We have a comment from Scott. Any progress on a game in Yankee Stadium? Scott, we're working on it uh, each and every day. And um, I, I have to be honest, it's been a little more challenging finding an opponent for that game than what I thought it might. You know, we were talking to a couple of Big East opponents. Uh, those items have fallen through. Uh, so we're, we're spreading our horizon uh, a bit. Uh, we do have, uh, we're talking right now to a program that seems to have interest. I'm hopeful that in the uh, coming weeks that that will materialize. And uh, if it doesn't, we'll keep looking. But I think we've probably got a three or month three or four month window to finalize that process. If not, we've probably got to start looking at other options. But uh, we want to be in the Northeast. I think it's a market that makes so much sense for us to take our brand there uh, probably every four or five years, if not uh, more frequently. But uh, we want to be in Yankee Stadium in 2013. They have our word, our commitment that we're going to be there. And hopefully we'll be able to find an opponent to play us here soon. We have our last question. From DG, what is the biggest difference in being an athletic director at a mid-major school and a BC, BCS? DG, um, it's all about the U, right? And uh, there's no greater place. I feel honored and privileged every day to be a part of this this uh, program. And you know, I, I think the biggest difference at a mid-major. Uh, you're fighting so hard for attention and for that fan support and that media coverage and, and you're trying to build something that honestly the the interest is not there and uh, here at the U uh, the the interest is there you know everything that, that we do is covered nationally uh, from a media standpoint and while some people might shy away from that or not embrace that I think it's great and we're appreciative that uh, all of you are watching today. We're appreciative of the coverage that we get across the country uh, from a media exposure, and we appreciate the, the fan support. So there are great days ahead for the University of Miami. We're excited about the success we're having in our current programs, and we're so excited about the future of our football program. So thank you for letting me join you today. And uh, again, I, I appreciate our communication staff for their tremendous uh, hard work and efforts on this social media day. Thank you.